Welcome to an MC Knitting Adventures tutorial. My name's Colleen, and in today's video, we're gonna talk about knitting with beads. The first thing we need to do when we're talking about knitting with beads is to figure out what weight of yarn we're gonna use and what size of beads we're gonna use. Now, as far as the weight of yarn, um, we're going to just look at a fingering weight yarn and the reason for that is the beads that you need to work with a fingering weight yarn are probably more accessible to us. Um, so we're going to use a fingering weight yarn and that means we're going to look at two different sizes of beads. One will be a size 6 bead and one will be a size 8 bead. Now in the beading world a size 6 is a bigger bead than a size 8. And we need to know about the difference in those sizes because when we go to put the beads in our knitting, we have to decide, will the yarn work with this size six? Do I need a size eight? What's the best thing to do? Most often, I work with Japanese beads. And the reason for that is because they're more uniform, both outside and inside. And so they make a better finished product. There are three names of beads. Um, of Japanese beads that I've used. So Mayuki, Matsuno, and Toho. And I'm just going to show you now some of the beads that I've purchased and some of the beads that I've used. So the first beads we're going to look at are size 8 seed beads. So the blue beads that you see are Mayuki seed beads. And these ones I had to order and I ordered them from thatbeadlady.com. Then, if you take a look at the side, these are Toho seed beads, also size 8, and these I actually was able to purchase at Michael's. So, you'll notice that these, the edges are a little rounder, they're smaller beads, and they're nice to work with. So, those are size 8 beads. Now, if we move over to the purple beads, the purple beads are actually size 8 as well, but if you notice, the holes in the beads are bigger. And that's because these are called Mayuki Delica beads. These are lovely to work with. So if you can find some, once again, I ordered these from that beadlady.com. If you can find them, they're great to work with. They're so uniform and they pop into your knitting really nicely and make it look good. If you take a look, these have a shiny finish on the outside. You can buy beads that are shiny, you can buy beads that are matte, and so you really need to look at what you were wanting to do with your project and the type of finished project that you would like. Let's take a look at these Toho beads. These were also purchased from Michaels. They're a size 6 bead, and it's nice when you can get things that you can go to the store and buy. There are bead stores, there's lots of possibilities for you. Now, these beads have what's called an AB finish or a ra rainbow finish, Aurora Borealis is what the AB stands. And so you end up with beads that are actually the same color, but they look different on the spectrum because of the way that that finish is put on them. These are size six. You can see the holes are nice and big, and I'll explain to you why we need to use a size six when we do. When you look at this tin of beads, you will see a whole different combination. And this is called what is called a bead mix. And so you put a bunch of different beads together. Um, these are the leftovers from one of the projects by Laura Nelkin. She does great um, kits. And I would suggest if you're new to beads with knitting, it's not a bad idea to get one of her kits. Her patterns are great. She's got lots of wonderful tutorials and they will help you to be able to deal, deal with the beads and the knitting. Now, if you take a look at this, there are metallic beads, there are matte beads, there are um, metal lined beads. There's just a whole different combination. There's some size six, some size eight. So it is a real combination and it does a great job in creating a beautiful finished object. The first way of working with beads in knitting is we are going to what's, do what's called placing a bead. When you place a bead, there are two strands of yarn that go through the bead. So we want to be using a bigger bead and if you can see here, we're going to use some size 6 beads. So I have a little bit of a sample done and what we're going to do is do some placing of beads. Now there are a few ways to place beads. The tools that I'm going to need is I'm going to need a crochet hook. And this crochet hook is a US 10 or a 1.15 millimeter. 
um, and I have already tested it out and it actually will go through and do what I need it to do. Um, sometimes people say just a one millimeter needle. You're going to have to take a look at the beads that you're using and go through the process. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to knit across a few stitches. Let's say three stitches and then I'm going to place a bead on this next stitch. So this is the stitch right here that I'm going to place the bead on. Now you really need to read your pattern carefully because it will either say that you're going to put the bead on and then knit it, put the bead on and then purl it, or put the bead on and just have slipped it. So I'll explain why they have to tell you that. So the first thing I do is I'm going to take my crochet hook, which is a US 10 or a 1.15. I'm going to pick up a bead. Now I have to tell you about this little dish. This was a quite a find at Goodwill. It was a dollar and it is the best beading dish. Um, it's got a nice curve that lets me pick up beads easily and a high enough lip, not a problem. All right, so now I wanna get this bead from the crochet onto the stitch itself. So I'm gonna take the tip of my crochet hook and put it in and grab that stitch and take it off. So I'm holding everything tight. I'm going to push the bead over and down. And then all I have to do is place that stitch back on the left hand needle. So you can see, there's my bead sitting. There are two pieces of yarn going through, same stitch, but two pieces. And now I'm just going to knit this one. So you just knit through the top and there's your bead placed. So let me knit a few more and we'll try that again. So once again, I'm going to take my crochet hook I'm going to grab a bead, so there's the bead. I'm going to grab the stitch itself, pull it off. I'm going to pull it through and then put that stitch back on the left hand needle. Now, if the pattern said to just slip it, then I would slip it purl wise and move on. So the first one has a knit stitch, this is a slip. So let's see what happens if it asks us to put the bead on and then purl. So I'm going to knit again. All right, so let's say I want to put the bead on here. Same idea. So I'm going to grab a bead. There it is on my crochet hook. I'm going to take the stitch. I'm going to give it some tension so that I can get it through. Then I place the stitch back on the left hand needle and then whatever the pattern tells me to do, I'm going to do. I'm going to purl this one so you can see that I can purl it as well. This will give us a purl bump on top. And there it is. And then I can just knit to the end and let's take a look at what we've done so far. All right, so we have a bead where we knit it a bead where we slipped it, and then a bead where we purled it. So that's the first way of placing a bead in your knitting. If you don't have a crochet hook, you can still place beads by using something that's called threader floss. Now I must admit, when I tried to buy this at my grocery store, it was mint. It smells lovely, but you don't need the mint. This is just plain. And what happens is you need to tear them open. Most often they're individually done. So you tear it open and here is what you end up with. So it is something that will thread floss through. And most often at the tip, there's a bit of a bend to it. So just so you can see that there's a bit of a bend. Now, all you have to do is cut that off. Just like before, I'm going to knit across a few stitches. And so now here's the stitch that I want to place the bead on. So I'm going to take my threader floss and pick up a bead. So there's the bead on the threader floss. I'm going to put the threader floss through the stitch. I'm going to take the threader floss up and over and put it back through the bead. 
So basically, I've sandwiched the stitch with the threader floss. So I push the bead down all the way down the threader floss. I'm going to pop the stitch off and then there it is. So my bead is on my stitch, my threader floss is there. I'm going to put the stitch back on to the needle and then all I have to do is let go of one of the ends and pull it through. And then I can take that stitch and just knit it. Okay, so let's try another one. We're going to move it over. All right, so now we're going to place a bead here. There's the end. I'm going to pick up a bead. There it is. I'm going to put the thread or floss through. Then I fold it back on itself. And I put it all the way through the bead again. I'm basically folding it in half. And then I push it towards the stitch. So you can see what's happening. There it is. I'm going to take the stitch off the needle. Push the bead down. There it is. I put the bead, the stitch back on my needle and then pull it through and now I've placed my bead. So I'm just going to slip that one and then I'll knit a few more stitches and then we'll do one more. So I've done one where I've knit the stitch, I've done one where I slip the stitch, now let's do the one where we purl the stitch. Once again, and the end of your threader floss will get more pliable. To start with, it holds on tight. So I'm going to grab a bead. I'm going to put the end of the threader floss through. I'm going to bring it back around and put that end back through. So now I have this fold. There we go. So you can see it's going to slide nicely down. I pull the stitch off, I slide the bead off of the floss onto the stitch, and there's the hole. I'm going to put my needle tip in there, and then I'm just going to grab that and pull the threader floss out. And now if the pattern said to purl, I'm just going to take that and I'm going to purl. So I have worked both with uh, threader floss and with a crochet hook. If you have the right size crochet hook, I like it. If you don't own a crochet hook, and you may not, then you can use the threader floss. It's really going to be up to you what you want to do um, and how it's going to work best for you. So that's how you go about placing a bead in your knitting. The next way of putting beads in your knitting is to pre-string the beads. So you put the beads onto your yarn before you ever do any knitting. You want to make sure that your yarn is strong. Sock yarn is great. So if, for instance, if you have a 75% wool and 25% nylon, just like you would have for socks, that's great yarn for um, working with pre-strung beads. If you look what I'm wearing, this is a kit but from Laura Nelkin and the beads for the most part are done by pre-stringing the beads. So you put the beads on your yarn and then we'll knit. So let's take a look at how we do that. When you pre-string your beads, you want to have something that's going to help you do that. And this is called a floss threader. So it's helpful to get floss through braces, bridges, it seems it's all about dental work these days. Um, this is one that I've got in a kit. Um, you can also purchase these. I got this at Shoppers Drug Mart. Same idea. It's going to make life a lot easier. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your yarn and you're going to thread the yarn through there and you want to leave yourself a nice long tail. So there's my nice long tail, there's my floss threader, and now we're going to pre-string the beads onto the yarn. 
how you go about doing that is up to you. You can place some beads in a little dish like that. Now, just a reminder, we've got some size sixes and some size eights. It's all going to work. Some people would rather put the beads in their hand and do it that way. So I'm going to do that right now just so the beads may be a little easier to see. So there's my floss threader. There's my beads. And I'm just going to put the floss threader in and pick up the bead. And I just do that. Most often, if you get a bead mix, they just say not any particular way of putting the beads in. It's totally up to you how many you do, um, but you grab the end and then you just pull the beads down over the, the yarn. So I'll keep working with the beads, picking up. Sometimes I try to pick up five or ten. It all depends on if the beads are cooperating with me. And then I'll just grab the tip of the floss threader and move it down. There we go. And then I'll just pick up the rest of these beads, just so you see how it works. There we go. There's the tip. And I'll push it down, push it onto the yarn. And then we're just going to push it all the way down until you're on that single layer. The first thing we're going to do is something called knit one bead. So you knit across. And now I want to knit one bead in this stitch. I'm going to stick my needle into the yarn. I'm going to move the bead up. I'm going to wrap it around. And then that bead, as I bring my knit stitch through, it's going to pop the bead up and it sits right on top of that stitch. So let's try that again. I'm going to knit a few more stitches and then let's put another bead on. So I go down to where my beads are. You can have, depending on how you hold your yarn, depends on how many you can have through. So there's that bead I'm going to pop on. I'm going to wrap it around Sometimes you need to do a little bit of jiggling and then as I pull that through, there it is, it's popped through and once again it's going to sit right there. And then I'm going to do the same thing. One, two, three, and then I'm going to knit one bead again. So now I've got my beads in a better spot. There's the bead I'm going to do. I have to give myself a little bit of room to bring the yarn around and then as I bring it through, the bead will pop up and then I'm going to do one, two, three, and then I'm going to do the same thing. So there's another bead. So I bring it up, wrap it around, pop it through, and there it is. And then I'm just going to knit to the end and we'll take a look. All right, so let's take a look. So we have knit one bead and we've done it four times. Now, right now, the bead is sitting on the right hand side of my stitch, but you may want so they don't all face the same direction. So what we do when we are going to purl back is we are going to change that and we're going to just make the direction do something a little bit different. I'm ready to purl back my beads are right there, ready to go, but my pattern's going to tell me to either purl one bead right or purl one bead left. And I have to make sure that I follow that when I'm working on my pattern. So let's go through. I'm going to push the other ones back. So this bead, first of all, I want to purl one bead right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the bead to the front. So let me purl across until I get there. Now some people will have you put the beads in the right place. I find sometimes when I'm grabbing my knitting back and forth, I move them anyway. 
So let's say my pattern says I need to purl this first bead. And it's going to tell me to purl it right. Then what I do is I move it to the front and then I purl the bead and that is going to leave that bead on the right side of my stitch when I'm with my work facing me. Then I'm going to keep purling. And now let's say I want to purl the bead left. So there's my bead and with left I push it to the back of my work and then I purl that and that will show that your bead is on the left leg. And then I'm going to continue. Now how I remember this, because there's always a way to remember, is that when I need to purl one bead right, the word front has an R in it. I know that sounds silly but it works for me. So if it says purl one bead right, I'm going to put the bead to the front. There's the two R's, right and front. And then I am going to purl that bead. And it will be on the right leg of my stitch when the work is facing me. Then I'm going to knit to the next one. Pardon me, purl to the next one. And then when I get there, let's say I, there's the bead. And I want to purl one bead left. So I put it to the back and then I am going to purl across and then we'll turn this around and take a look at what we've got. So there are my beads sitting nicely there and we've actually done some work with their direction. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put a bead between two stitches. So let me knit across three. And now I want to put a, a bead between these two stitches. So notice that I don't have my needle tip in to do that. My needle tips are apart. I'm going to bring the bead up and then I'm going to knit and you can see that the bead is sitting between the two stitches. It's not on either one of the stitches, it's just between. The nice thing about this is you can see the bead on both the front and the back. So let's try that one more time. One, two, three. So now my needle tips are separate. I bring the bead up and then I simply knit the next stitch and there's my bead. It's sitting in between. So that's how you put a bead between two stitches. It's another great technique as well and I like it too. That's an introduction to knitting with beads. I hope that you found those techniques helpful. If you have any questions, just comment down below. There are a number of different patterns for beads that you can see on Ravelry. You could go to Laura Nelkin's Etsy shop if you're interested in getting a kit. The one that I'm wearing is called the Bead Curloop. Um, I'm also wearing, these are called the Migra Mitts. And so if you take a look at these mitts, the beads themselves, I guess, migrate. I imagine that's where the name comes from. And I used both size 6 and size 8 beads on these. And I really, really like them. They're kind of fun. Thanks so much for watching. If you like what you're seeing, give me a thumbs up, comment down below, subscribe. We really enjoy doing our podcast for you and doing tutorials for you as well. So until next time, you take care. Mm -hmm.